Hello, this is Rebecca Fleetwood Hessian, host of the Badass Women's Council podcast. And I'm super glad that you're here. I hope you're enjoying the holiday season. We have a special New Year's Eve episode for you today with Russell Davis. And Russell is a mixologist. He's a spirits consultant and actually was 2012's Bartender of the Year, was nominated other years as well, has been on the show Bar Rescue as um, a contributor and co-host. The guy knows his way around the bar and some drinks. So I thought, what better way to celebrate New Year's Eve than with the resident expert of mixology? So what I love about this conversation with Russell is we go so many places in this interview. Uh, There's a little bit of history of hospitality. There's some Jesus. There's some why women make make the best bartenders. Oh my gosh, it's all there. Russell is an amazing individual and he's doing great work traveling around the country and really wanting to change the world through the way that we drink, which what better way to celebrate New Year's Eve? Here we go. Mr. Russell Davis, how are you this evening? Uh well, not doing too shabby in Kokomo, Indiana. Kokomo, Indiana. Kokomo. Thank you, Twitter, for um, getting us together. You know, it's, it's interesting you say that because uh, uh, Twitter's brought together all of this. Like, uh, I've been on this tour for a few weeks, bringing me to Kokomo's Twitter. Uh, literally uh, had a mayor of South St. Paul, Minnesota, thank Twitter for making this connection. Uh, it's weird how powerful Twitter's become. I love that we can use social media for good. Because so much of it is used for evil, <laughs> that we're rising above all that and uh, having a great conversation tonight. Absolutely. So it's, it's, I'm grateful for the time. So we had a chance to chat briefly and you made a pretty bold comment that I love. So I just want to launch into that. So cool. you believe that you can change the world by the way that people drink. Yeah. Which yeah. I love that because- Homegirl likes a good drink. <laughs> so, uh, or through drinking, through drinking. Tell me about that. Um, well, one, uh, hospitality. Um, well, we forgot what actually true hospitality is. So I, I'm going to go against a, a, a few different things that a lot of people actually think. And this is going to be maybe I actually, some of these things I actually haven't talked about yet. Good. Uh, for some reason I feel like I should now. Um, there's some revolutionary aspects of this industry that we are not uh, jumping into that people are capitalizing on. And yes, I am one of those people that has been able to capitalize, capitalize on my reputation and, and doing certain things, but I, I wanted things to be done right. Okay, so hostility, for example. Yeah, yeah. Your first instinct based upon every bar you've been to, mixology, everything, what's hostility to you? Hospitality to me is um, based on the bar. Um, anything. Oh, anything. What do you think people actually, you know, just, just what is hospitality? Oh, you know, that's a, oh, you've hit on a topic that I love because I hosted small parties and big parties for years. And here's what I learned about hospitality. I used to think it was my job to entertain people. And as I started to study what really hospitality meant, it was more about bringing them into the conversation and the experience versus it being about me creating a show for them. Okay. So what if I went a couple steps further and actually told you that hospitality in one of the oldest definitions we've ever been able to find was a knightly term. That was uh, one of the oldest ones that we could find is French, but that meant Basically, uh, service to mankind. Oh. So whether or not you're coming into my house, right, I just walk up onto the road and you are got a flat tire or your wagon's broken down or you just need help. Or I just give you a smile when I'm walking mm. by. So it's more about connection and how we interact. Just treating mankind correctly. And actually not even treating mankind correctly. It's saying going above and beyond, giving service mm-hmm. to mankind. 
So hospitality isn't what it's come to mean today, which is more about the service industry. It's really about humanity and how we're supposed to treat each other. Absolutely. And, 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 and one of my biggest problems in this industry, and for, for me, things is that we've never asked why. Uh, a lot of people get get tied into certain things based upon that this is the way it was or this is what we talk about. So, for instance, it's, it's the uh, uh, the symbol of hostility is the pineapple. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. Right. Uh, I see a lot of mixologists and bartenders get tattoos of pineapples. <laughs> uh, can I cuss on this? Um, lightly. Okay. So iTunes gets I'm a little. Not, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> Just iTunes um, gets a little freaky if I you know, go too so, far. So, so it's it's. Okay, I, this is the one time. Bullshit. Oh, that's fine. Okay. Oh, pff, that's so, 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 <laughs> um, everybody that got those tattoos and they like put that thing up, they never actually studied it too much. So the pineapple actually comes from Central America. Costa Rica actually is, uh, considered one of the birthplaces, if not the original birthplace of the pineapple, mm-hmm. right? And it was actually a symbol of conquering. Okay. Oh. So the Spanish conquered, they, no one else had pineapples and so pineapples were brought back from these countries after we conquered them they were placed on the uh uh tables of uh uh um well we'll call them the one percenters (laughs) of of the era uh and uh it was a symbol whenever i had guests over of what i had conquered when i had guests (sighs) over okay and sometimes these pineapples which we were enslaving people for doing um actually were never used. Sometimes they would literally rot on the tabletops. So we, as a society, really forget to ask why. And that's a topic that we talk about a lot on the Badass Women's Council because why is about purpose and intention. And I believe that people should live intentionally versus habitually. And also, refl- you know, we talked about something before going into this, like reflections and mm-hmm. things, right? Right. But also, like, uh, you know, one of the biggest things whenever I go through a day in business or anything else is, is like sitting back and reflecting on sometimes my uh, uh, reactions to things right. and then always asking myself why. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think that's that's important. And and so, so somewhere in Des Moines, there's a bartender with a pineapple tattoo looking oh, down at it saying there's about 70 of them in San Francisco. <laughs> 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 but, you know, this is literally the first time I've said this uh, ever. And, and, and these are about the things that about to be the things that I've uh, and through my research about to come back and tell the world. I yeah. love that. I'm, I love I'm that. kind of over everyone like living in their own universes. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so your dream, and, and I love bringing dreams into this because we'll be launching this at the beginning of a new decade, which I think is significant for us to pay attention oh, to, right? Geez. And we got so much stuff going on right now. I mean, politically, environmentally. Everywhere. Economically with the entire world. Uh, a giant shift change. And I think a new decade is a call to dream bigger and longer term. It, I mean, and not just let's set a goal for 2020. No, let's say, what are you going to do to shift and change this decade? I want people to be humans. Yes. Again, Amen. exist as hu- humans with each other, right? So there was like one of these, uh, so bars, when I talk about this, like changing the world through drinking, I mean, Ernest Hemingway literally said, if you wanted to uh, judge a culture, take a look at its bars, right? Um, bar was short for barricade. Uh, that was in pubs that were public houses. And originally we were the courtrooms. We were the, the, the community centers. We were the, the churches. We mm-hmm. were everything. Right. And those bartenders were not just bartenders. They were a little bit of everything. And, and, and we, we got to get back to being regulators of society by understanding what's going on in those places. And so, for example, you know, I always heard this, uh, you don't talk about politics or religion in bars, Right. I totally disagree. I think you shouldn't be in a bar unless you can talk about politics and religion, right? I would rather you not have to give me an age of when you can drink in my bar, mm-hmm. not tell me you're 21. I'd rather just know you could talk about politics and religion. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. And to have the freedom to have the conversation. Is that where we're going? The, the well, not just the freedom is there. Right. right? But it, it's the actual like capacity of a human mm. to interact with another human on levels of those things, capacities, mm-hmm. right? Uh, we ignore it. And uh, uh, we allow it to come across in, in different ways. And uh, um, we, 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 
we don't value what's really happening in these places as social congregation, as true windows and test markets of what's going on in the world. Um, so I've been on tour of the United States for the past eight to 10 weeks. And it's been very interesting because I've had a uh, chamber of commerces bring me mm-hmm. in, uh, mayors here in Kokomo it was a Senator, uh, that made all this happen. Um, and it's just really nice, uh, to see these people that are getting in these powers to actually realize that bars are where it's happened because for so many, so long, uh, we tried to avoid these places is looking at them as truly the social petri dish of how we should just society. Mm, interesting. interesting. <laughs> and having grown up in them, quite frankly, uh, whether behind the bar or just social, you know, that's connection, right? There's so much opportunity for connection in this. Uh, you know, there, there's, there's, there's opportunity for connection everywhere. Right. Um, and, uh, hopefully, uh, Bars won't be the place that we have to look at these social peace mm-hmm. traditions because hopefully we all come back to just having one building where it's all done right, <laughs> right, right. or something like that. Right. So, um, so yeah. in the next 10 years and hospitality and looking at the way that this can be done differently, what's, what's your plan to do that? Um, well, uh, something that I've initiated uh, for a long time, which is, is to study the ancients. Uh, I've been traveling around the world uh, for the past uh, four or five years studying uh, indigenous drinking culture. Mm-hmm. Um, Fascinating. You know, I, I got, uh, it was weird after, after Bar Rescue, I actually left Bar Rescue four years ago. Um, I wanted to, uh, well, you know, there's, there's interesting things these days that, you know, I'm not going to, well, maybe we should or not, or whatever you want to, but um, that kind of make you pissed off every now and then mm. about being an American. Oh. All right. Amen. And and uh, uh, I I, I uh, wanted to jump into these places that inherently were blaming Americans um, for doing things, uh, and um, study their cultures. Mm-hmm. You know, come back and be the the one that was differential, uh, but also before they lost it, because in a lot of these places they were fleeing and having to come to borders that were not accepting them, and you would lose ancient uh, ways of doing gar- uh, gifidi from the Garifuna or Chicha from the, uh, you know, uh, or Bauche from the ancient Mayans and and and, and the Canons and, and different different aspects, right? Right. And uh, and also, by the way, I just named a couple of tribes there. <laughs> that had nothing to do with the actual border stuff. I'm gonna have a hard time getting those in the show notes. And, and I'm, I'm just gonna let that be what it is. People are just gonna have to listen to that and Google it themselves. <laughs> uh, but um, um, you know, I thought it was important instead of being the the. You know, I quote unquote mixologist mm-hmm. uh, that was studying what um, the next sound wave I was going to push towards whiskey in order to age it better. Uh, how I was going to find out the things that we were losing. So it's more of for you about the humanity of things and how people connect in this environment versus the spirits themselves or the okay, so things the, the, themselves. The, the, the first thing when you're born, what's the first thing you really need? To, to calm your crying. The first thing you need? Yeah. Air, water, food, well, I mean, the fir- basics. Yeah, absolutely right. Actually, let's, let's, let's put it a different a direction. The first thing that like you actually have to do or has to be done to you, right? Being fed. Yeah. Right? Right. And not to say it vulgar, pop a titty in your mouth, drink some milk. <laughs> yeah. Right? Pop a titty in your mouth, drink some milk. <laughs> Path of least resistance. Boom. <laughs> uh, I come out of a desert. Okay. Right? First thing I need. Water, water to drink. Um, let's let's get religious and not. Okay, I have a weird theory, but I've gone to these places and studied it. Jesus. Uh, by the way, so I, I I study every spirituality, every religion. Um, I'm actually an acolyte and a a altar boy. I used to be in the Catholic Episcopal Church, but now I I literally practice. A little bit of everything. I'm ordained as a minister if we want to marry anybody tonight in the bar. Boom. I am actually, I am actually ordained as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> we can eight, do a double wedding right here tonight. Eight weeks ago, I held the cross and prepared the wine for the priests of the Episcopal Church. Oh, I, I realized it was my first bar bag job. <laughs> yeah. and what was funny what was funny at the end of it all and so there's pictures on my Instagram of me doing this too um, but what's funny at the end of it all because uh, uh, the, 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 the vicar... Um, you know, you're supposed to, they're supposed to, the priest or the preacher or the priest is supposed to drink all the wine that they've overmade. Yeah. 
Oh, and, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, 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 uh, you know, you, you, that's a perk of the job they don't talk about so much. Oh, well, you know, it's a, it's a perk. <laughs> but like when you get older, it's not so cool. Okay. And so they, it was, I, when I was 12 years old, it was the first time in 25 years I had done this. Okay. But I walked into this Episcopal church because I like to practice spirituality and religion. And I'm, you know, I'm still very connected to that. Yeah. And I saw they didn't have the acolyte and I offered myself up and they allowed me to do it. Nice. Yeah. And, 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 but, but they looked at me and they go, uh, can you finish off the rest of this one? Right. And so I, in the, in, the, in the back of my head, I'm thinking this literally is like my first bar drag job. I had to get all the stuff, help make it. And then they're like, whenever they get offered the shot and they don't want to take it, they're like passing it off to me. <laughs> That's hysterical. Uh, but, but so, so, so let's, let's, you know, Jesus Christ. Yes. I'm a fan. Uh, first miracle, water into wine. Yep. Right. Yeah. If you actually studied all that, no one knew who he was at the party. Oh, he nice. was not he was not invited. Yep. I've crashed no a few one knew who he was. parties. Or was he the guy serving? Because two thousand years ago, when you added wine, when you knew as a specialist how to ferment alcohol and you added wine to water, it allowed people to gather in mass. Mm. Otherwise, people had water was the most protected substance. Okay. So alcohol was not there to get people partying and all this kind of stuff. It was there to sterilize the water to allow people to gather in mass. Otherwise, I had to carry my own water. I could only stay there long enough as my own water survived. I couldn't combine my water with other people. I didn't try other people's water. Mm. Mm, okay. Right. So the only way that I could literally go to a place and gather and party for days on end or hours and drink together wasn't because I was getting drunk, but because someone specialized in alcohol in order to sterilize it to allow me to gather in mass. Oh, that's fascinating. Boom. So that's where hospitality, humanity, connection drinking starts with drinking. <laughs> I love it. That's beautiful. <laughs> Who knew we were going to bring some Jesus into this? I'm a fan. Hey, you know, I mean, the thing is that there should be a little bit of all of them. Right? Yeah. But, but yes, this, this thing that we've been avoiding saying it's so scary that we've regulated, we've literally, um, prohibition, mm -hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Prohibition, we discovered the largest oil and gas reserve in the United States, right? Had to cut down alcohol, which was creating pure ethyl. Uh, Henry Ford, the entire time, was arguing why we were converting the engine to using gasoline and oil because originally he invented it as pure ethyl running. I did know that. <laughs> I haven't thought about it in a long time, but yeah, fascinating. Yeah. Fascinating. So, you're on tour going around all these various cities, small towns, cities all across the country. What are you noticing about the way that people connect in this call and need for humanity that you want to continue? What are some of the things that you're picking up through this tour? That, that they're bigger than the big city people. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, 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 I don't know. Still finding it. Still finding it. I know I'm drawn to a lot of things. Yeah. It's too early on to, for me to, to actually give you a definitive answer on that one. We'll have to circle back on Twitter and you can let me know what you think. You know, I, I look at my, myself as an explorer of sorts and also yeah. a, uh, you know, someone that learns to teach. Um, and um, there's more culture. Uh, we're finding out that the best bars, restaurants, and and everything in the world uh, are now being started in the places that are one, two hours outside the big cities. Mm -hmm. Economically, you can stabilize businesses better um, in order to do what really is the cool stuff. Uh, you just have to get everybody on board with stabilizing the cool stuff. Yeah, you know? that's fair. Yeah, That's fair. One thing I do want to talk about before we wrap up today is... Oh, sorry, did I go too long? Man? No, 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 you're good. You're super good. I'm just sensitive. you got a, you got a job to do here in a little bit, so I'm just sensitive to making sure I get you off the mic and behind the bar oh, oh, thanks, over thanks, in thanks. a few minutes. We so. need like 15 more minutes. Yeah. All I need is five minutes. I'm, all right. I'm like all right. Well, I don't want to hold up, uh, hold up the show here, but I do have a question for you. We yeah. chatted on Twitter a little bit about... Women making better bartenders. Oh, yeah. And you have some interesting thoughts and theories on why that they is. They make the best bartenders, naturally. I agree, having been one and yep. being a woman. But tell us, what is why is that? Um, well, I mean, scientifically, uh, your bodies handle better senses. Um, 
Uh, it's interesting because scientifically they say your bodies don't uh, react faster than men. Okay. Okay. Um, which I think is actually a good thing. I think maybe the quick reaction of men in this industry causes a lot more problems than does good. How many times have we seen the security guy that takes mm-hmm. the guy by the throat too quickly? Right, right. Uh, and does that thing that actually erupts into a giant bar fight? Right. Bar fight. Um, or um, uh, the fact that your actual senses of taste and smell mm-hmm. uh, are, are, are actually... Um, uh, you'll find out there, there, there is a, 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 a type of person called a super taster. Okay? Mm-hmm. I am, I am not a super taster. So you can, you can go all online. You can buy strips that you, I've heard of that. Yeah. Uh, you're going to find out the women are much more uh, acute to being uh, super tasters. Um, but also that they can actually, so one, they react um, more properly. Just instead of saying mm-hmm. slower, they react with uh, a, a more thoughtful process. A little more, yeah, I was going to okay. say intentionality. Intentionality. Their bodies are literally scientifically made uh, to 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 uh, be with the culinary world, okay? Um, even anciently, when you, when you talk about indigenous cultures, okay, um, <clears throat> I studied uh, with a bunch of indigenous throughout Central America, uh, Central America, in South America, specifically the Terra Berberan, who's who I'm going to talk about. Mm-hmm. The Terra Berberan, um, the women are the ones that are the most protected. Mm. Okay? Because the women's cook clean, they give life. Oh, right. This is not a service duty. This is a godly duty. And so they are literally the ones that hold the land. They carry the last names. If a man dies, it goes to his mother. The land goes to his Mm, mother. Uh, The shamans are uh, uh, not allowed to teach uh, the the ritual practices to their own sons. They have to teach it to the women's families. Okay. Yep. Um, So there's a way of protecting that. And so we actually, uh, and especially indigenous cultures, um, uh, okay, so a lot of the things that are that are seen as arrowheads, okay, mm-hmm. uh, specifically in Isla Mescala and around uh, Mexico and the ancient Nywal, um, they were never arrowheads. They were actually bleeding mechanisms for the men to press them against their their forehead where their third eye would be, mm-hmm. and they would tap it and they would bleed themselves. And the idea was that uh, menstruation was a clean process for these indigenous. Uh, 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 menstruation was a clean thing that women had mm-hmm. that. Because they provided cooking, they had it better. And by the way, they provided cooking because they were better in tune naturally. Mm-hmm. So when the tribes decided what your jobs were, it wasn't a job. It was just how you naturally were better, right? Right. And 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 and, and so they were more in tune. And so menstruation was a cleaning thing that men actually protected. And so originally the tribal leaders were all female and the men would, would knock themselves with these things that we thought were arrowheads for a little while, but we couldn't understand why they were so heavy. Um, and it was a way to bleed themselves in the forehead because they thought of the, the thought of having to do the other things, the negotiations and the protection and everything like that. Um, they needed to menstruate themselves as men. Oh, that's fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. So I love what you said about they were given the jobs because they were uniquely qualified for them. It was their gifting, if you will. They were the gold at the center of the hut. And you sent me an article as well. It talked about even from the, their fingertips and the senses that that women are uniquely gifted in ways that attribute to feeling, smelling, touching differently absolutely. than men. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, uh, um, uh, Absolutely. Uh, once, once we, <laughs> once we as men realize that we're like very uh, uh, messed messed up in a few different ways, <laughs> like one with the psychology of what the world makes us think that we believe ourselves as, and then also just how we fumble around and do things and 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 look at the the grace of the sexes. Uh, and I'm not saying that men we're not great at certain things, right? Sure, sure. Um, but but uh, uh, I will say that uh, I feel like at least in the bar industry for years and many other industries, um, uh, we we've 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 gone against the fact that uh, they were they were so much better than us. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got it. We've got it noted here now. So uh, I've got uh, the, the expert in bartending who said it publicly. So we're going to run with that. So not only gifted in the way that they handle the crowds and interact with people, but also in the way that the drinks are mixed and the things that they can touch and I mean, or not I, touch, but smell and taste yeah. to understand that what 
goes well together. Absolutely. I love it. Absolutely. I love it. And you know, it, it's weird because it just feels like another version of like the pineapple. Say more. Um, what, what we as, 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 as men do, uh, uh, you know, the women are pineapple. <laughs> okay. It, 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 it's, it's, it's come across that in a, in a weird way. Um, you know, we, we, we feel like, and I, I'm from Texas and I'm not saying the Texans are any other different, but I, I get to deal with a bunch of uh, very macho. I was going to say there's some Texas. fair amount of. <laughs> Machismo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, um, um, you know, the, the, the women that we conquer or yeah. have, you know, and we, they're a pedestal and, and everything. And, and, and we don't, uh, ever told a story of where they became or how they actually grow and thrive. And sometimes they lay on that table until they die. Uh, Does that make sense? Yeah. And, yeah. and now that, that seems like really deep into stuff, but, uh, so I bring it this glass. Okay? Yes. So I have a glass in front of you. Um, I'm going to fuck up the, excuse me. I'm going <laughs> to mess, I'm going to mess up the, <laughs> the, the, the Glenn Kinnitchy glass, right? Okay. Yeah. So this is the glass that was developed um, as the the official tasting glass for spirits. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. So scientifically, a, a group of people came together, mostly men. I was going to say, probably men. Yeah. And decided that when we taste spirits, in order to judge them properly, you know, uh, they created the shape of this glass and it flows things into a certain way mm -hmm. and, and whatever, right? Um. So this is actually the standard glass used for tasting spirits in a lot of cocktail competitions, right? Right. So there was um, maybe eight, ten months ago, uh, an article that came out that talked about how women's senses are literally cute in different ways mm -hmm. and how we're messing up their senses by doing this, right? Oh. Okay. So um, that actually the glasses that should be shaped for women should be shaped differently for men because this one's cupping this and like sensing it to you, whereas that's going to burn your senses for a female. Because it's too concentrated. Right. So like think about that. So this is the standard. Right. And you're one of the best female tasters in the world, right? You don't even have the best ability in the standard to be able to be a judge on liquors. Fascinating. Correctly. Whereas in other, let's use sporting events, there's a physical nature to it where the equipment or the, the way that it plays out would make more intuitive sense. But in this it's internal. Yeah. And so the tools for the job leave us at a disadvantage. Yeah, well, unknowingly. We, we, well, so the job is to judge it. The right? tool for the job has actually been given to uh, the other side. That's fascinating. Yeah. I wonder how many, of even though you're better at it, Damn right. So, like, think about that too. <laughs> so, like, so, like, you know, the, the maybe, I, and I, I can't, you know, I know what the statistics are on whether a female runs faster than a male, right? But imagine that. Uh, uh, what if they said on this like thing in football that you had to press against that females push it harder, mm -hmm. but we made it this way for males to push it, so they felt like it was better. So do right. the, do, <laughs> I'm not even going there. I'm just gonna let it go. But so. Do the females in your industry know that and, and and change their technique to accommodate because of that? It's it's literally something that just came out. Uh, I, I used to do a uh, industry news network show mm -hmm. and reported the uh, main industry news. Uh, I know it's one of those things that passed cost my radar. Um, Fascinating. Yeah, yeah, Fascinating. Yeah. I, 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 it's weird because it, it kind of got brushed underneath the rug. Uh, no one really cared to talk about it too much. Hmm. Yeah. Connect me with one of the top females in your industry and I'll make sure that she gets a voice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually thinking about who that would be right now. In my, in my head, I'm like turning. Yeah. I'm, right. I'm glad that I can't say one. You can't? Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad that I can't say the, one. Because there's more. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You have to get to work, Mr. Davis. Yeah, yes. You've got a class to teach tonight, right? I do. Tell us about what you're doing as you go on the road. What, what's about to happen here tonight in this bar that we're in a couple months? Uh, so I decided a few weeks ago, because uh, no other human being was doing these kind of things in the world, to uh, uh, go on the road to the United States and uh, go into people's homes and go into places that normally wouldn't be able to bring me out and just uh, teach people how to bartend and, and talk about these type of things. Uh, I truly do believe in changing the world, dude through the way it drinks and uh, I'm on a mission. I love it. I'm happy to carry that story for you. <laughs> Thanks so much. You're amazing. Thank you so much. And I'm not coming down.
Thank you, Twitter, for the opportunity to meet Russell and do such a fun interview. Okay, y'all, it is New Year's, but it's not just a new year. It's a new decade. And what an amazing opportunity to really zoom out and think about what's the next decade going to mean for us. And so I have created a PDF download that walks you through step by step how to dream the decade. So if you go to my website, wethrive.live, you can download it there or a link in the show notes. And I encourage you to take some time over the holiday, take some time over the next month and really think about what you want this decade to mean for you. All right, y'all. Thanks for being here. I'm not coming down I never left it on the ground I'm not coming down